So welcome back everyone. I did a video a couple of years ago and it still remains one of the most popular videos on the channel. And that video was about a steel two-in-one chainsaw sharpener. So we're gonna do a really quick video today showing how to use this, answering some of the popular questions that I've been getting. I still get weekly questions off of that video. So I figured it's time to do a couple of year update. I may have had this for three years now that I think about it. Talk about, well, the pros and cons, show you a few little tips and tricks and how easy it is to use because in my mind I personally feel this is the best chainsaw sharpener for a non-professional. So to show y'all how much I love them, well, I now own three. So that's the first point that we need to discuss. You don't buy a single sharpener and expect it to work on all chainsaws. So long story short, whenever you purchase one of these, you're gonna see, hopefully I can get this to focus on the package right here, it says 3 8 P. There is multiple different types of pitch chains. So if you don't know what the pitch of your chain is, you can actually take your chain off. A lot of times on the bottom side to where it runs through the sprocket, it's stamped there. On the bar of your chainsaw, a lot of times it'll be stamped there, especially if you just bought a new combo and everything's together. But it's going to usually be in one of those two places. So on extremely small saws, you may see something called a quarter inch pitch. Moving on up, you may see something like a 3 8 P. Do not confuse this with the larger 3 8 So P stands for Pico. That's typically what's on steel smaller saws. And by the way, you can use these on any brand chainsaw chain, as long as you match the pitch up properly. Then it moves up to a .325, which is what I'm using on my saw today, on up into a 3 8 which is what I run on my larger saw. So your large and mid-side saws, you'll typically see that. I think it goes on up to a 404, if I remember correctly, on large saws. So there's lots of different size files. So ultimately what that means is this round file that's right in here, come on, focus for me. That file is different sizes based on the pitch that you have. And that's very important for getting a good cut on the teeth of the chain itself and filing them down properly. A second point that I wanted to mention about these files that I did not cover in my other sharpening videos, you can see this top piece pops right off and these files themselves are replaceable. Actually, the one that I've had for three years now, I'm probably overdue on changing the file out. You can actually feel the cutting surface on the file, only one direction, and you can feel when it starts wearing down and it's no longer gripping your finger, uh, or if you just don't see a whole lot of metal shavings coming off the chain itself. So you can purchase these separately. There is two round files in the middle. That's what makes these sharpeners so awesome and a big flat file right here. So replace those as needed, but as you've seen, which I rotate through a lot of chainsaws with different chains, but I've gotten a couple of years out of one particular set. Now, if you're using this constantly, you're gonna change the files more often. So let's get my chainsaw out of here. It's got a relatively sharp chain, but it does need some touch up and we'll go over how to actually use this file. So for example, on my steel saw, this is a very old bar right here, but you can see there's some stamped information in here and it says 0.325. That's the pitch chain designed for this bar. So always check your bar in this location. Some chains on the underneath side, once you loosen this up, see underneath, will actually be stamped on that as well. That'll help you with matching up, making sure that you get the proper size file. So if you look right here on this particular file, if I can get this to focus, it says 0.325. So I know I'm matching up the correct file to the correct saw right here. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. No point in seeing my face for this demonstration. Let's talk about the proper way to sharpen because I've had a few people say, hey, they didn't think these things worked at all. And I can just about guarantee you that's because they were sharpening wrong. I have yet to find this not work excellent for me. All right, so something very important we need to discuss. You see how that tooth right there is going at an angle that way. And then if you jump back one tooth, well, you have to come around here and it's going at an angle this way. Every other tooth is at a different angle. So this tooth is at the same angle. Skip a tooth, that one's the opposite angle. This one right here is the same exact angle as this. And that is very important with sharpening. So you only sharpen every other tooth from one side or the other. I'll show you that here in just a second. And I apologize for the poor lighting, but I'm out here working today. But as you can see, I just showed you the close up of those teeth going this direction right here, every other one. And that is important because if you'll notice, this is where a lot of people mess up. There is an angle 
on this sharpener right here. So most people are gonna wanna go to a tooth, slide the round file under it, and they just naturally think, let's just go straight across the tooth. Well, that's the exact opposite of what you wanna do. Also, if you look on the sharpener, there are arrows on the bottom and top telling you which direction to run your files because the files only cut in one particular direction. Also, if you'll spin your chain around, this is an older chain, so the paint may have been worn off, but there's typically a link that'll have like, say, yellow or green color on it. This one, I think, looks like it's gonna be more completely off, and that's okay. But what I typically do is start with that particular link and sharpen my way around. So let's spin the saw around and start this particular direction. Now here's the beautiful thing about these particular files. Your typical chainsaw file is going to be a single round file, which will work underneath that tooth. You have to make for sure that you find the proper angle, plus you want to make sure you're level up and down. That's the case with any sharpener. But as I sharpen with this particular file right here, I'm only sharpening the tooth. So what that eventually means, if I only sharpen the tooth, just like that, I am not sharpening or knocking down what's called a raker. That's that piece right there in front. So some people call those rakers, some people call them depth gauges, but long story short, if I continue to file this tooth down over many, many months of use, weeks, how much ever long that is, the tooth itself is going to eventually work back. And by the way, you see that mark, that black mark, the groove that's in the tooth itself? That lets me know if I ever file back to that far you need to dispose of your chain. Typically a chain will stretch out before you'll ever make it back to that far on sharpening. So here's the problem. I sharpen this tooth, it starts slowly working its way back. So as you can see, the tooth is at a slope down. So that means the tooth height is getting shorter. Well, if you don't knock down these depth gauges right here, so eventually that's what's gonna be riding on the wood surface and the teeth are no longer gonna be able to plunge into the wood and actually do any cutting. So what's so awesome about this file right here, not only does it have the two round files for two different directions on your teeth, but it has the flat file in the middle to also flatten and knock down, you can see that one's quite flat, those depth gauges. So your tooth is always at the proper height and able to uh, dig into the wood and do some cutting. All right, so now I'm gonna take this bottom file put it underneath the tooth, make sure my flat file is on top of the raker. Now we know that we're going the proper direction because we're gonna take them both down at the same time. I'm gonna turn my file until the plastic itself, this angle, the file is telling me, put this against the bar and chain just like this. Now I'm at the perfect angle this direction. And you wanna hold your file nice and level. So just put a little bit of downward pressure and only cut one direction, the direction the arrow is telling you. Come back underneath the tooth. And because this is relatively sharp, I'll just do like three to four passes. If I had really dulled this chain up, I'd do five to seven passes. But it's so quick and easy to touch your chain up. Now, since I don't have a painted link, that's okay. I can see the top of my raker is nice and polished. So is the inside of my tooth. I see a little bit of metal down here on my Ranger. So I can continue to work around until I find that polished raker again. So we'll move the chain backwards, go back underneath that tooth and make about four passes. Proper angle and nice and level putting a slightward downward pressure so that center flat file knocks down this raker. So hopefully the camera shows the nice flat surface up here, nice and polished, just like that one. So you can see the file is cutting the inside of the tooth and that depth gauge. Okay, so once you sharpen all the teeth that are going the same direction, remember you're only sharpening every other tooth because they all go varying directions, you flip the bar around, you flip your file over, and you just do the same exact thing. Make sure your flat file is taking down your depth gauge, make sure your round file is underneath the tooth, match your angle up, slight downward pressure, and sharpen. Very, very simple. So when it comes to sharpening chains, I can typically do one, I've timed it before, 
about three minutes tops on your standard size bars and chains with this device right here. And I always have a significant difference. I've done a couple videos before showing a very dull chain. I cut a piece of wood, I left it live, I sharpened for about three minutes with one of these. Go back to the piece of wood and the saw just blows right through it. It makes a significant difference. As expensive as these chains are getting, most people throw them out early because it's around 13 to $15 here locally to go have someone sharpen a chain. Then I have to make the trip all the way to town or I can sharpen it out here in about three minutes by myself. Plus if I'm cutting through the wood, hit a stone, a piece of wire, hit the dirt and dull it right up, I don't have to go anywhere. Just bring one of these out in the field with me, touch my chain right back up, and I go back to cutting. Typically, I find that I can get several years out of rotating through a few sets of chains, and they'll typically stretch to the point that I can no longer tighten them up to take the tension out before I ever sharpen down and wear the tooth out. So think about that, that's big savings. I can run about three chains for several years before I'll finally toss one and go get another one doing all the sharpening myself. These are a little expensive up front, but they pay for themselves by just saving you a couple of chains realistically. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed that. I wanted to do an update video because I've had so many people here lately asking about this product right here. And there was several questions that I just needed to get answered and things that I didn't answer in the last videos. I'll put links down in the description for these items right here. You can pick them up at your local steel dealer or right off of Amazon. Links are down in the description and I'll list several different sizes. Don't forget to go check your saw and make sure you're getting the right size file for your right size pitch chain. Catch you on the next video.